what is going on nissan nation let's see let's see if we can get danny on here because we've had nothing but troubles tonight and uh if it wasn't for my my wily friend tim here who um let's see where are we at sorry i'm i'm trying to get danny in here guys i'm Mark. in i'm here no you're not on the video i think they can hear you danny but i don't think they see you just yet hey guys i'm coming let's see uh, and see what i can do can y'all hear danny for one thing i know check this is one two can i get some feedback on the <laughs> chat live chat how you guys uh how you guys doing tonight this can is a, you hear me this is a classic Major one Tom. danny danny this is it's a this classic is... we like to we like to throw one of these in and in every once in a while that's right that's right so i'm gonna put it on just for me for a second let's see where's danny's camera there's danny's camera uh discord yeah there's dan guys we are just we uh we it's a mess tonight man so you know why it's a mess danny because all this news breaking here lately you know yep it um they can hear me they can hear me apparently well, that's danny good. sound chat eight out of ten said poor daddy <laughs> you're an eight out of ten danny, i'll take an eight out of ten all day you're two out of three ain't bad mm. right well luckily i don't have video yet because i uh i just spilled beer on my chest oops now I'm rubbing it all over, so maybe we need to put it back up. <laughs> oh man, Dan. So how is while while I get your audio going, how has your weekend been going, buddy? Well, I'll tell you what, Dave. I was uh, I was hanging out at the pool in uh, 78 degrees here out in SoCal. A uh, beautiful afternoon, eating some tri tip. Yeah, some some smoked tri tip, and uh, and I had to rush over back to my house because I love all you Nissan people, and every Sunday. Uh, I have to sacrifice family time, but that's what I do for all you people. So, dude, can I good. get uh, can I can I get a sticker for that, please? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a gentleman, sir. You are a gentleman. I um, uh yeah, buddy. I know you were heating up over there, dude. It's it's in a scorcher here in Middle Tennessee this week, man. It we went. It was like 99 today, and we had I had a softball practice going on, and like I I uh, I don't know, man. Sorry, my son's trying to give me technical advice while I uh, <laughs> while I try to fix this uh, this crazy uh, stream. But let's see. Here. Well, while you're while you're doing technical stuff, Dave, let me uh, let me just go ahead and shamefully plug my new video that I just dropped on YouTube, uh, which is the Nissan Frontier Walk Around update. I uh, got the red truck back, and everybody needs to go over to that video. Give it a like. If you're not subscribed to me, please. Please subscribe to me. I am so close on watch time. I uh, got a lot of watch time out of it so far, but uh, check it out because I got all new super sick McNeil fiberglass on the truck. It's all painted red. My 33 inch tires look, look painfully small. Looking very tiny, Danny. Very tiny. Very tiny um, and very inset. Uh, I just put those wheels on too. Now I'm gonna have to sell my new Freshy Pro 4X wheels. Well, if somebody wouldn't have ran into the back of you, man, you know. I know, I know, I know. But uh, yeah, go, go. When when we're done here, go watch my video, please, to the to the from the beginning to end. <laughs> and, uh, and and give it a thumbs up. Give it a comment. If uh, actually, I, I asked uh, in the video, I asked people uh, if they could give me some heads up on uh, what they think I should do with the front bumper because uh, if you go in and look and and watch the video. It's a little, uh, it's a little off. There we go, Danny. I think I, I, I I've somehow managed hey! to get you a little bit on here. So uh, I see, I see myself. It's not our standard uh, setup, but uh, you know what? It's better than nothing. I mean, the people need to see the real face of the podcast, not just <laughs> Dave's, uh, Dave's grimy mug. That's right. That's right. Hopefully, oh, look at. Oh, we're getting sized. We're getting sized up, huh, Dave? Yep. Well. My my buddy Tim over at Pickup Truck and SUV Talk, he was trying to talk me into to redoing my stream a little bit, and unfor and then I didn't realize, guys, that Danny was like not, <laughs> Danny wasn't uh, available. Run a little jump, late, <laughs> yeah, to jump right in on this one. So I apo I apologize for the mess of, that this has been so far, but we will get. I promise you, we will get to this just in a second. Get my name back where it's supposed to be, and yeah. me and Danny both been we've been coming in hot today, man. So Danny, let's uh let's kind of break it down. So you got your truck back. If those that are watching don't know, you um you had a little boo boo with your truck, right? 
Yeah, got rear-ended on on a trip uh, almost a month ago, maybe a little, a little bit more. Um, but it, it completely wrecked the rear bumper, pushed into the rear tailgate, and part of the bed. So the bed, the interior of the bed, got all repaired. Um, it wasn't quite so bad as I thought, but right. the um, but since we were going to be doing a bunch of work and on the on the bed sides and whatnot, uh, I decided to go ahead and and do full fiberglass for front and rear from McNeil. Um, so I did rear bed sides and front fenders. Uh, they're four inches over or four inches wider than stock. So uh, those those got all put in. Um, back of the cab got uh, got resprayed and so yeah. So now it's uh it's all fresh kind of. Well, <laughs> you know, speaking of fresh, like I, I know, like you were literally texting me on. You were like you were. I heard you getting into the the Red Dragon there as you were trying to break break ground to get here, right? Yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's running strong like always so nice to drive it i've been missing it so bad uh and of course the second i got into it i got a uh, check engine light which i kind of explained in my video as well but uh luckily it's nothing big it's it's just some evap stuff and uh you get some of that when you go off-roading and well they, dust they, gets everywhere well i watched your i watched your uh your channel on that and was it was it maybe they bumped something when they were monkeying with the bed no, uh, I, that's my first thought was either. And one of, one of the things I, uh, I touch on in my video is I, I pulled the one inch body lift off. So I was like, oh, great. Maybe I smashed some wires or something. So I went under there and I was looking and there's no way for me to have uh, smashed those wires. Uh, and then I, I, I kind of did a little research and I was looking at it and I was it, more than likely it's uh, it, it just got some some dust into the connector or the, the connection's not as good as that, at that purge valve. Not a big deal. It's, I mean, that, tr that truck went through so much silt and dust. I pulled my uh, AFE filter out, which here's a shout out for the AFE filter. If you haven't seen that video, go back and uh, watch that one on my channel. Uh, I put the whole AFE intake on. And um, one of the things I wanted to do and that I had talked about with uh, Z1 Off-Road when I ordered it was, did I want the oil filter or did I want the dry filter? And I said, let's do it with the dry filter because I think that's going to be my best bet for the desert, dry, silty, dusty environment that I'm in. Right. So I pulled that thing off. And, and the way you clean those is you basically just knock off all the dust and then you run water through it, let it dry and put it back on. And it worked so good, like so much better than like the K&N where you spray it down with like a degreaser type K&N stuff you know, wash that out and then you got to re oil it or whatever, and then let it sit for a certain amount of time. This thing, I mean, the dust fell out of it really well. Um, it washed out really easily. It dried out really quick. Um, and you can actually shop back it too, which was right. a kind of cool thing. I did like a quick shop back on it, but, um, yeah, there was about a half a cup. I, I kind of measured it. It was about a little over a half a cup of dust that was stuffed into my filter. So she started running a lot better once I, uh, cleared that out but yeah so that that's kind of how much dust i went through on that last trip it was just <laughs> silt and dust to the max well you've never so so i know you were you we talked a couple shows back with z1 that you hadn't really got that hot tune just yet right you mm. haven't programmed you haven't got it in just right not yet not yet i was i was kind of thinking i might do that today uh i kind of ran out of time uh i wanted to shoot the video of the update on the truck and how it looked and where i was at with it and whatnot so, uh, so I got that shot and I, and I, I, like I said, I took that body lift out. Um, just the, it didn't line up very well with that body lift on it. So, so you did, I took the body off. lift That's out crazy. Yeah. And I mean, it's so easy. You just yank all the pucks out real quick, throw the bolts back in. Um, I mean, it, it probably took me about 45 minutes to take it out, but it, the, the body lines, especially when you're, when you, with those fenders, um, you see so much of the frame and body and stuff like that with that body lift on it. Um, which I, I put that on because it, it gave, it gave me just that right amount of clearance with the stock offset wheels. And when I originally had the, the skinnies, the 255, 85, 16s on there, mm -hmm. when I had that set up, the body lift was perfect. It, everything tucked just right. Um, and it was a really great setup for, you know, for how long I used it. And there was nothing wrong with that setup. And I, you know, I possibly could have done that setup for forever. It, it worked so good for everything that I used, but you know, sometimes you just, you're a motorhead and you can't leave well enough alone. But, um, well, no, that's, so I pulled that off problem, and now right? it's, yeah. And, but it, it makes all the gaps and all the, you know, if I'm going to be having a new bumper, possibly it would make things much easier for a new bumper. Um, it just, every, everything about it is, um, a little bit easier. So, 
Right. Well, guys, if you would, because we've had such technical difficulties, if you would like and subscribe to this or like and uh, share this stream to wherever you, your so favorite social media is, I would appreciate it a lot. Like, like I said, this was kind of embarrassing. We hadn't had one of these technical hiccups in quite a while, so we were due for one, Danny. But Danny, yeah, we were we were ro we, we were rolling a little a uh, little too smooth. I think that was a big problem. Danny, I mean, I've got look, dude, I was rolling so hot as I got Chinese fear. Let's see, I've got. I got some Chinese fear. No Chinese here. There's some, there's some, uh, gen like Chinese general food chicken. Here's some low main noodles. Oh, Danny, if you need nice. them. Nice. Um, but no, I, I just finished my barbecue there, Dave. Okay. So. Okay. Well, and tonight I am drinking a 10 year old, uh, uh, frontier whiskey. So, Oh, good for you. Well, you know what, Dave, uh, this is a non-sponsored shout out to my boy, uh, Chris Ennegren. Uh, Chris Ennegren makes an amazing beer. Um, right now I'm drinking uh, Lagertha, uh, a hoppy pilsner. Uh, this uh, this <laughs> is like a homie of mine. Your voice changed. A hoppy pilsner. A hoppy pilsner. Uh, out here, Ennegrin Brewing Company is. Let me. Oh, it's they're freaking amazing. Just a good old fashioned German beer company. Nice. Uh, if it ever gets out, if it ever gets out out of California here, man, Dude, people the, need to get on that stuff. What was that? The 805 that I drank when I was out there. I I still yep. miss that beer. And, uh, well, cheer I was hey, drinking guys, it earlier today, but that comparatively this, speaking, that's this should well. be brought to you by Monster because that's my other go-to. Dude, I've got drinks everywhere. Let's see, I've got a Powerade Zero here. I've got, I've got my whiskey. I've got my Monster, and I've got food. I'm here for guys. We're gonna stream for the next ten hours because, like, by yep. the time I finish the Monster, I'm Don't like, stop. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Danny, I, I, rumor has it there were some big things going around. Uh, around the world of automobiles this week. And I did a video on this and the, the video has done pretty well. And there's been a few, uh, there's been a few haters on there, but my question to everybody was Nissan versus the other is in the off-road world. And, and specifically we had <laughs> G or uh, we've had Ford Bronco launch this week. And I, I know your buddy over there at expedition outfielder outfitters is freaking him. Yeah. I know he's so stoked about this because he's only brought it up in, 25 live streams we've done but um, 20, 25 out of the 24 live streams yeah. yeah but i will say dude so so i watched the nissan launch of the kicks oh, yeah. ev no kicks ev a oh, couple okay. weeks oh, ago oh yeah yeah and i had said on here it was horrible like they couldn't it was like it was done by a high school production crew it was just god awful so and Ford's release of the F-150, honestly, was pretty bad. It would just, it wasn't, it, bless you, it wasn't, it wasn't well to do. It wasn't done right. And You don't think so? Not, I thought it was decent. Not of the F-150. I thought it was okay, but I don't know. I, I think maybe I was, I was just comparing it to basically any time Nissan tries to right. debut something. But we're in a crazy <laughs> world right now, you know, because the F-150 and Bronco would have been probably launched at uh, Detroit Auto Show. And of course. Well, I think, I think Dave too is, is. The F-150 was probably – they probably had a plan that they scrapped, and then they went with the de, you know the online, the, right. this new debut idea. So it was probably slightly last minute, et cetera. It could have but been. But I'm sure there was a ton of lessons learned in that debut. And on top of that, they probably knew before they let the F-150 out that they were going to have to do this with the Bronco. They knew they had to bring the Bronco out. Right. And they probably <clears throat> knew when they were getting ready to do the F-150 that the Bronco would also have to be like this. And so I'm sure that they, you know, they said this worked, that didn't work, this worked, that didn't work. And they, <clears throat> they kind of melded that uh, idea well, out. And because the Bronco well, you know, reveal the, was I so will epic. say the Bronco video had to have been filmed recently because there was a couple weeks ago when, and I know, the guys, this isn't Bronco Nation and this is all leading to something, but – so there was those pictures a few weeks ago out where they showed one of these bron or a couple of these Broncos, like a drone shot of these things that had gotten leaked out. And it's definitely in, in some sand dunes, some desert style areas. And sure enough, the same color vehicles are in these. So I know they filmed it, you know, within a few weeks. Of course, you know, you got Brian Cranston, Mr. Uh, Breaking Bad there doing doing yeah. the and that's a classic voice, man. I mean, the I love voice it. is so good. I, so good. It, it's 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 not like your grandfather, but it's somewhere in between your dad. No, and it's your, just a respectable like, yeah. sir. Let, you, you immediately call him, sir. Uh, <laughs> right? You're great. You know, right? so so I, 
I, my expectations for this was pretty weak. And then, so I get into Ford's live stream on this thing because I'm like everybody else. I'm curious. Of course. I mean, if, it's, it's if, an off-road vehicle that we've been looking for. Right? right. And if Ford does something, generally it makes everybody else take notice. And I, and I hate to say that because I'm not a, I've owned a brand new Ford before and you know, I'm it's whatever, but it's, it usually though, they sort of seem to be the leader when Ford decided, Hey, we don't want to build cars anymore. GM, like two weeks later was like, Hey, we're out too. And then like Dodge or Ram or whatever you're going to call them. They're like, well, we kind of build cars that just nobody buys them. So we're out too, I guess. Um, and the import market with Nissan and Toyota and everybody's like, they're just, they're, they're got that money grab there. They're like, yes, we're going to own these cars now, which they yeah, have anyways. capitalize. Yeah. But so, so I'm in the live stream and, and you guys, I'd posted on Instagram and places like I was trolling like crazy before the, before the thing, man, I was just like Nissan Xterra. And amazingly, I, uh, me and my buddy Joe Taylor there and car Jeep and a few others that joined in. Like I was surprised the Xterra was getting a little respect in that thing when I would do that. Now, you know, you go full troll, troll mode and they're going to like start attacking you, which I may or may not have done, but but I was surprised. Like people were like, "Oh man, you know the Xterra was a great off-road vehicle," and uh, so I was surprised about that. And then it turned into a TFL, like free TFL, with because they pissed off Ford and all this stuff. And oh I'm just yeah, like, Jesus man, I don't. Nobody cares, and and nothing against TFL. Uh, you know, I made my remarks on that a couple shows ago, and I still stand by those. Um, so I'm, bam, all of a sudden it plays, this video pops up and it's playing the heritage. Oh man. It's, it's just like showing the 66 Bronco and the mid seventies wins. And you hear that V eight and you're just like, Holy, like I'm getting goosebumps, Danny. And I'm not a Ford guy. I'm just like, and then all of a sudden it shows that, that two door coming through, like through the side and you see that orange color. And I was just like, Oh my God, this is yeah killer orange color. Yeah. You they, know, just blam in your face. Right. And, and the video shows how capable that vehicle is without them really having to like show you numbers. Like you see that thing. Yeah, going they were beating, they were beating the piss. They were beating the piss out of that thing in videos. Yeah. I'm very curious to see if like, if it actually hold up or if they just <laughs> beat the piss out of it. And then they're like, yeah, see, it can do this. Yeah. And like, if you actually see it, you're like, that thing is beat. They're <laughs> you like, know, that thing broke actually. Yeah. They're like, print us another one guys. We need to do another video. Um, but overall, the, like I thought the like little 13 minute video, was very inspiring just for the off-road community. It was very inspiring because, you know, Jeep has owned this community, like, like the off-road segment, like you can say what you want about Toyota forerunners and all this and the Tacoma. But if you think off-road, you, you go right to Wrangler. And, and so, and they, 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 their vehicle is purpose built to go off-road. It's yes. not, I mean, and, and that's what it's built off a chassis that's purpose built for like almost like rock crawling to tell you the truth you know mm -hmm. they, they've stuck with the solid front axle for so long now um it's purpose built for off-road driving you know because if it's if it had any reason to stay on the road they would they would have scrapped the uh solid front axle a long time ago because a solid front axle has very poor driving characteristics right. especially when it's you know steering and and etc 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 but that's you know that's what wrangler has has dominated the market with is a a purpose built vehicle for off roading. And I think the American spirit has embraced that. And, and it's, you know, it, it, it has become an icon because it hasn't had anybody doing that since when, you know? Well, yeah. I was trying to think back who's ever truly challenged the Wrangler because the Wrangler, like through Jeep being sold 1500 times and, you know, everybody owning it for 10 minutes. Um, it's I think it's just sort of lucked out that it sort of was that little hidden brand that it sold well, but not in the 70s and 80s. It didn't take off till it did like in the mid 90s. Once that TJ hit, it like took off for some reason. Um, yeah. And I mean, it, they, they were I mean, they've never been the best built vehicle besides some of their bones. They, they had mm -hmm. the the four liter was a great motor for them mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, just kind of like a like a torquey reliable motor um but in you know having solid axles uh the dana 30 it's a it's a it's a fairly weak axle but it, you know it's still a straight axle did compared notice, to a lot of the stuff that were on the market did you notice ford was stressing dana 44 and it, uh, like uh, everything was dana 44 yeah yeah and um, but the thing is too is like i mean we, and we can get into this i know it's i know it's the nissan productions but uh, we got to get into this because it's a it's a it's a market changing thing mm -hmm. and it's not it's gonna it's gonna affect every single market and especially nissan because they've they've only dabbled they've dabbled in the off-road stuff 
as it, it, within the last what what 15 20 years right you know so right. it's gonna change things well um, like, like for the our, better or the worse our buddy uh exo there said you know he was and i was gonna bring this up like that solid axle drives like crap it really does. Like it's a very ancient. There's nothing more you can really improve to the solid axle. Now the cool thing about solid axle on these Jeeps is you get killer flex. Now, killer flex. Like I have an Xterra that'll flex about 12, 12 inches or more. Like it, it will flex like crazy. But guess what? That still doesn't mean if it's stretching like down, those wheels are not making solid contact. It's there's not a lot of weight on there for it to do that. You need you need the weight on the ground to push the vehicle up hills and stuff. So. I think that I think that what uh, Bronco just did was really force Jeep's hand to go IFS. Like I really do. It, I mean, they've there's been a good. There's a very good possibility of that. They've been hinting at it that it was going to do that anyways for years. Now, granted, I think they're going to always have a Rubicon that's got Dana 44s under it, straight axle. But they this this Bronco is going to drive great in comparison, and it's going to be at, maybe it's not a ten that the Jeep is on trails. But guess what? It's probably an eight and a half. And for and, daily people, eight and a half is great. Yeah. And and so so the thing is too is is when you're when you're going over something that when you're so a straight axle is great when you're going over small or, or when you're when you're on sh- slow rock crawly, you know, little hill climb stuff or whatever. But the second you put some speed into it, you're you the the steering situation and the the rebound and the how that suspension works, it's not ideal for anything at speed. And right. so that, that trade off. And I, um, I was reading a very long article about when they got really into the, of course, cause I've nerded out on it. It Jalopnik put out an article and they got really nerdy, uh, about the entire reason why Ford had done X, Y, Z and right. how it was set up. And the Ford engineers said, listen, we are, uh, uh, IFS front end isn't quite what the solid front axle is. For, the, for for rock crawling scenarios or mm-hmm. you know slow speed climb scenarios they said however in high speed desert or and not even high speed but like you know mid speed you know when you're cruising down some, some dirt roads and some some bumpy roads and stuff like that that ifs has so much so much better characteristics yeah. um and and the steering situation um it's it's the the steering rack is going to last a lot longer than mm-hmm. the steering box steering box needs way more maintenance um, yep. They made a, a ton of really good points in that scenario. Um, so yeah, it's it they 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 know that it's not a solid front axle vehicle, but independent front suspension has come so far from its original, you know, the exterior, the torsion bars, and the no travel and whatnot. Um, it's or come like, a long, even, long even way. Even the old Bronco twos that had that weird scissor scissor <laughs> deal that was horrible, man. Oh, the the I no the I beam was an amazing suspension. No. It was it so amazing was, they quit oh, using it real they, quick. No, they did not. They <laughs> they ran. Okay, you're gonna get into a fight with every single SoCal guy out there. <laughs> oh, SoCal the, the guys. TT, the TTB and and we'll call it I beam suspension, um, which is like a two wheel drive, the, just a standard I beam suspension. Uh, is ridiculously stout, Dave. It, dude, I'm having this so is, much. This tr- is another. Sh- this is another show right here. Just just talking about I beam versus uh, twin I beam versus uh, a arm. I mean, there's you would have no idea about how how big the desert community disagrees over very yeah, very. But desert community is like 15 people, man. Come on, buddy. I mean, oh, it, bro. In, in the in the in the world get out of, of your shell, bro. <laughs> in the world of auto sales, man. Let's let's be honest. Like, if we're going rock crawling, and I don't, and I'm I'm not dissing. Like, I know you like desert racing and all that, but it, it, you have to admit, Danny, that's a very small segment compared to just normal people off roading. So, I mean, if we're gonna get into that, well, yeah, it probably okay. Well, great. here you, you're call you're you're saying. I mean, and here's the thing, Dave is you're talking about. We'll, we'll call it. East Coast off roading versus West Coast off roading. There's so many people now that are like Broncos, the big Bronco, the old big Broncos are being bought up like crazy because they are stout. They have that. Um, it's not. A, it, it's like a twin I beam, but it's uh, it, it's TTB stands for Trans. Yeah, uh, burger burger. So, <laughs> but it's the it's the I beam suspension where right, and then the pumpkins in one of the I beams, but. Those are extremely stout, and it's a big, um, it's a big, capable, strong, 
you can get ton tons of travel out of it and and that's that's like a thing out here now right. it, they're, they're coming back just like you know just like old straight axle blazers and stuff like that but there's a resurgence of those and i mean yes in the in the pre-runner desert ranger stuff you see a lot of um, equal length i beams because you can get massive amounts of travel out of them they're very strong but um, there's really there's really ups and downsides to both. Danny, I'm just aggravating you, dude. I don't really care. I know you are. I know you are because you. <laughs> I know. I know. You're not in. You're not in the desert scene at all. <laughs> no, but it's you're. A, I, <laughs> I've hit. The, I've hit on this topic with you before, and you're always sensitive to it. But anyway, so we're gonna get back to this. And guys, it does. Yes. Lead, this does lead to Nissan. But I think Ford did exactly what they needed to do. They they benchmarked a Rubicon, and was like. God, we can do so much better than this, even though it is independent front suspension. Like the base model of this Bronco is damn near everything you would want in just an off-road yeah. vehicle. I mean, it comes with an eight inch screen that's bigger than than Jeep's screen. I think they're putting it. I think an eight inch is what you get in the Rubicon. Like Yeah, and, and uh some, something to, to mention too, Dave. Well, um I was reading again, I was reading up on the on the um kind of the base model. If you don't get the front and rear axles, the front differential is all aluminum and then if you get the front uh locking axle it's a it's a split case yeah steel uh, front differential still obviously um still obviously independent front suspension but the fact that it's steel i think that that's a big deal i haven't seen um i'm sure they're out there but i haven't seen any steel ifs front well, the, but the, uh, the axles case, out there the case is steel but the shaft the 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 protruding shaft area is aluminum still from my from i don't what I've i seen. don't think so yeah from what it, I've seen, it might the, be but i diff, doubt it but they you know what that means they've even paid attention to like nissan's problems with those all aluminum diffs and they they know that they just explode so yeah yeah um, but as as i kind of wrap wrap up bronco talk here bronco nation um I was very impressed what they did. Like they even even that video, that launch video set the benchmark for how you do a launch video now. And sadly, I think days of car shows are damn near numbered. If COVID didn't kill them, they were dying on their own anyways, which bums me out because like, you know, I'm just been covering them. So I'm just really getting into that scene and then it's going away, but they did everything you needed to do, man. In that video, yeah. if you notice in that video, it looks like they're all all the action shots are all about the same speed. Like it's very, it just shows you like, it's just fast paced, bam, bam, bam. We're going, yeah. we're going quick. Um, and like a four, the four door looks great. Like I'm, I'm partial yes. to the two door because I like the old style Bronco, but the four door looks great, man. Um, and the, the, the storage space in the back is a little, it, it's like they took a lot of the, they obviously they took a ton of cues from Jeep and they said, okay, Here's what Jeep is doing. How do we make everything better? What do people dislike about Jeeps? And they, they, you know, they kind of said, okay, we're going to fix that. We're going to fix this. We're going to do this. Here's our take on that. Um, but, but really, if you were to say, if you were to go on, on, you know, our page and you said, what would you want from the Frontier? Or I'm sorry, what would you want from the Xterra if you had a dream sheet? And we actually took what most of the people out there that really off-road <laughs> said that they wanted and we made an Xterra. That's like, it's almost like what uh, Ford did. Mm -hmm. They took, they took like a dream sheet, the front and rear, front and rear lockers, 35 stock, you know, like they have a, it's an electronic, like hard turning um, scenario in, in the um, computer logic where it'll lock up a, a rear tire, uh, like a right rear tire. So you can do a super hard right, right turn on a super tight trail or something like that. Like there's just so many, and and we haven't even like I don't think we've even scratched the surface once people get their hands on it and they're really getting out there and they're like oh this it does this and right um, so everything I've read is they really just dream sheeted this thing and then they said okay how do we make this thing somewhat of you know more affordable than Jeep because really well, well you a, know a Rubicon right now is sixty four thousand dollars you know and in the memes for are, a loaded Rubicon yeah the memes are already floating around for Chevy about you know Ford brought back the oh Bronco. the Blazer yeah. I came back as a car. <laughs> yeah, and and nothing against the Blazer because I think that's a good looking SUV, but but it like Ford basically they they benchmark the ZR2 package in the Colorado with the front and rear lockers. They took yep. the, they took a Wrangler and was like, how do we mix these two? And they damn sure did it, man. Now, like you were saying, if you were to take this and go, hey Nissan, here's the bar now, like a pro oh, yeah. a Pro Four X, like this next Frontier, it just got a lot more 
better halves. Like if yeah. they do not make a Pro 4X or Nismo, whatever they want to call it, with front and rear lockers and some kind of some kind of, it better have some of this tech now. Something yeah, like this. Yeah, absolutely. Tech. Or, absolutely. Or it's dead. It's dead in the water for as far as a true off road. And in my kind of thought with tonight's live stream was. Where does Nissan stand anymore in off road? Because I'll be honest, I this release made me nervous about the frontier. And Danny, I, talk, I agree because that front that frontier is in 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 almost like pre production right yes, now. You yes. know, like they have they have you know if if that uh, if that one uh, shot that spy shot of that one frontier that we did a that you did a video on if that's they're just doing final testing right now. Mm-hmm. You you can't just go back to the drawing board on a truck like that and say, you know what? I want to put in uh, a front locker. I want this thing to have an option of 35. Like that's not stuff that you do at this point in time right. in a, in a, in a production vehicle. There's well, so I much testing think, that happens before that. I don't think 35 is in a pickup truck from the factory. Right. Right. It, but what, I, what I'm saying sense. is like big, big additional changes. It is better not, look they're, they're not going to happen right off the bat. Right. They, I, my, I, my thought is maybe they come out with their regular version of the truck but then they say, you know what? These Bronco sales are, you know, so high that yeah. obviously this market is has money and they want to spend it. Well, even um, for maybe even, we come out with a really, really good Pro 4X version, you know, or funny, something like that. Dan, if even like it was admitted, I've watched a few interviews with the, the gentleman that designed this Bronco. Even Ford didn't want to build this. It took 20 years for the Ford team to go, hey, man, there's, <laughs> there is a market here now. It shouldn't have taken anybody 20 years because you've seen what Toyota's done. You've seen what Jeep's done. You, I mean, overlanding isn't like it came out yesterday. I've yeah. I've been tracking overlanding for almost 15 years. And, guys, it's it's here to stay. Like, like people like adding things to their vehicles. They want to buy a vehicle, and it's a representation of who they see themselves, and they want to build a badass vehicle. Now – Ford went ahead and cut out aftermarket. Like there'll be tons of aftermarket for this. Don't get me wrong, but the thought process of me being a real, uh, like me and Danny are real off roaders. We both do off roading, and it we it's not because we're covering off roading. Like I'm so tired of seeing all these people on YouTube, these big channels. And I, somebody fussed at me the other day on one of my Scotty videos. Well, you're just jealous. I am not jealous of these other channels, but what I am tired of is seeing these journalists who may off road once a year. And it's because or they, G- or they go on, they go on some, some like a uh, lead tour, you yes. know, you don't have to know anything. You don't, you don't have to understand anything. God, I you seen... just drive a vehicle off road. And then all of a sudden you're some kind of off roader. Like there was Jalopnik you... and uh motor trend and all these guys. And, and there's the one guy from motor trend who does the podcast that we've given crap about uh, Sean Holman, I think is his name. And he, I know he does do some, Man, my mic is like killing me today. I know he does do some stuff, man. And so he would be the one legitimate guy that I would say out of all these people that I've seen. But they ended some video of Bronco of going, well, I only think people with beards should have Broncos. And it's because the two hosts are, are freaking yuppie whatevers <laughs> that like grew their beard because uh, their probably job required them to grow a beard. And But my point is like I'm so sick of seeing all these people who are te- are got first look at these this thing and are like oh well you know it's it's going to be this kick ass off road thing and I'm going to do I'm going to be one of the first ones to like prove it and you're like dude you know nothing of off roading for one thing so that aggravated me when I watched this but back to the Nissan thing Danny it really like they just set the benchmark and do I ever think Nissan is going to and I want your opinion on this question do I ever think Nissan is going to build a Wrangler killer or a Bronco killer no. I do not think they're built. They're not built to be this company. Ford has all the resources in the world. Even though last year they or this year they've posted five billion dollar loss, and if yeah. that was Nissan, it'd be it was, like their bankrupt. That was that was probably that was probably them developing the yes. Bronco. Yeah, I can just... I can see that. I mean, they came out with three different versions of that Bronco. No, they come out and with like the, six. Well, there's a couple. There's a couple more filtering out right now, but we'll we'll just say the three major versions, right? Which is the the Bronco Sport, the two door, and then the four door, oh, right? Oh, okay, I see where you're going. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, let, we'll just we'll just call it the three basic versions. The amount of money that it takes to come out with or to 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 R and D those 
three vehicles is astronomical, especially right. when you're thinking about. I've told you all um, before, it's a billion dollars to develop one vehicle. Oh, now, granted, and yeah, it's that billion was split between the Bronco and the four door Bronco, but the sport itself is a whole other billion dollars. Yeah. Th so there is so much money in those. And this, I mean, it has to be a win. I think it is, but it has to be a win for them because that there's a hell of an investment there and somebody's gambling a lot of money on this. Um, I think they gambled, uh, very well. Um, but, uh, what, to your point with, you know, is Nissan ever going to do anything even close? I think we've seen what Nissan is focusing on, which is EV Aria. You just popped the video out of the Aria. They're very heavy into EV. The Aria is, you know, it's got all these little, uh, little Tesla features that, that they're talking about. Um, and so they're heavily invested in, safety mm -hmm. um so the safety 360 thing you hear that a lot they're very heavily invested in the ev tech right. from leaf that they were moving into aria do d does the does the frontier is that is that filling a need for now until they can you know, I, you know transition more or is it i don't know danny because look, look at bronco sport oh let's let's look at bronco sport which is the most practical thing they built there which is is a unibody independent front and rear suspension thing where will that if we're going to compare that to nissan pathfinder would be the closest thing that it would ever compare to right i mean it probably i mean a rogue probably size yeah. wise but rogue is never going to no be it's not it's not as it's not as beefy well so get this a little birdie told me this week nissan has a titan out in moab that's been trailing trailing a, a, a pathfinder that's all badged up out in moab so yeah. I, I do Inter think very interesting. I heard you when you told you yeah. told me about that. Very interesting. So to see that they're doing something along those lines. Now, obviously, we I can't confirm this, but Nissan it's it's rumored that, and we probably started the rumor, <laughs> but <laughs> it's getting a nine speed transmission supposedly. Um, yeah. Now that would make more sense trying to do an independent front and rear suspension versus a CVT because the CVT is going to get hot on the trails and it's just never going to do anything. So if they put a real transmission in that Pathfinder and it's never going back to its true path 80s, like everybody goes in, oh, the Pathfinder, it needs to go back to its roots. Guys, it didn't, it left its roots in, after Gen 1, like <laughs> Gen Gen 2, 3, 4, wherever we're at now, guys, was was made more for soccer moms. But yeah, the, the, the 05 was kind of cool. Uh, yeah. It just, it lacked a rear solid axle, which, uh, which, you know, for drivability for soccer moms was great. But uh, but it, it lost a little bit. You know, it, it had some good underpinnings of, uh, you know, the that V8 frontier. Too. <laughs> yeah, it had a V8. You know, there was some. I mean, I, I would be willing to to I would stick my neck out for that version of the Pathfinder. But, the you know, the version before um, didn't do anything great. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're right with the Pathfinder. It would be so nice to have a decent um forerunner competitor in the pathfinder you know right. what i'm saying no and I, I i definitely i definitely agree with you on it that. doesn't it doesn't need to be a it doesn't need to be a bronco competitor obviously that's not that's not really what the pathfinder is but no let's but let's move let's move into this conversation dave wait if wait, wait Nissan, hold on danny i want okay, but I, okay. to, I, I know i know i'm being kind of a dick here i, I want to get though if nissan is actually building something that would take on the the bronco sport like bronco sport danny it's got sort of a rear locker of some sort a track or whatever they called it yeah. um but they definitely with that truck they took on overland like yes it's independent front and rear and it's truly not as capable as what i would want but they went head first in that thing with overlanding and they knew they like they didn't just go into Jeep. They went into Toyota territory and was like, okay. I think real quick, Dave, I think that they're, they are looking at the, the Toyota and Subaru market. I mm -hmm. think that they are looking at the Subaru market with that vehicle because the Subaru market is, Hey, let's go, let's go camp fire roads, you know, do yeah. a little bit of stuff and adventure. Let's go to Moab and park it and go whitewater rafting and let's, you know. Let's go to Arches so I, we can walk. We can walk somewhere. Yeah, but but I think they're I think they're fighting for a little bit of that Subaru style market with that vehicle. That that was kind of my feel for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not the most ridiculous overlanding thing, but no, if they, not at all. If if it's if it's built from from what I see, it's built pretty well. Um, if it has those kind of um, you know good enough 
off-road shops for for you know for what it is right um it, it might be able to to move into that that well, segment you know they, with the foresters i mean the foresters are kind of like the uh the rock crawler and <laughs> tiva wearing <laughs> please, please you know, everybody the boulder knee the the boulder colorado people um, and please they, everybody they might be stop, pushing into that stop for all god's sakes please stop lifting subarus just stop it i mean it, it does i i can't. no man it's sweet <laughs> i i kid i kid but it uh, but uh, it does like it, it does show you like like we're all such old school traction bar guys and all this and they're suddenly like you're like well that probably would go everywhere my my exterior probably would have went but um so we had a question i before i don't want to be rude and, and miss it uh dd Guys, and thank you for that $5. And guys, when you do donate that that kind of money, man, we do appreciate it for one thing, but it does just, it's helping the channel grow. And it's some of our future plans that some may like and some may not like grow. So um, guys, any news on factory slash uh, the plant uh, or from elsewhere about Rogue Pathfinder Frontier production start dates or when can we expect them on dealer's lots? Well, for Frontier, they're just now getting 2020s on dealers lots. So, and the last, the last, and I've said this on the show before. So my inside source told me that since COVID hit, everything new was pushed 90 days, like just 90 days. So they just released uh, rogue and uh, I wouldn't expect to see it on dealer lots. Probably honestly till first of November. Uh, and that's, that's just me speculating, making a guess there. Um, Pathfinder, they it's due it's due to peak out here anytime now. So um, once again, I wouldn't think till November, early December. And Frontier, sadly, I don't think we see Frontier now till the spring of uh, 2021. Which, uh, like I was saying earlier, Danny, this I the the rang or the the Bronco thing has made me nervous at to where where Frontier is sitting in, in, in my household. We've, we've privately talked about this and I'm not going to release all, all of my thoughts or plans, but I've been looking hard now at what I've seen of frontier. Now the Nismo is very exciting, but the potential for Nismo to be affordable, Nismo is $60,000 midsize as you, or uh, pickup. I think if they truly, you built, think so? if I, if they truly built, a front and rear locker, like we've we've discussed, you know, some sort of long travel suspension. They want that money, so at minimum fifty five thousand dollars. At minimum, it, if I, so let, let's just let let me play devil's advocate here. Right now, you're looking Pro Four Xs are uh, mm -hmm. are are thirty five, maybe thirty five at this point for for the, the you know, my truck, you know, uh, the new version of my truck. I think my truck is about thirty five when I bought it, roughly. Um, you know, 33, 35. <clears throat> I think they, they retailed about 36,000 when you bought yours. Yeah. Re so that's retail. You get a, so let's just say, even if they bump that up $10,000 to $45,000, um, which, you know, it's, it's going to bump up a, a, a little bit just because it's new and, and fresh and stuff like that. But I would, I would say that a 45, cause I mean, you're not going to buy a Toyota TRD or a, a Toyota TRD pro Pro Master Flash with the with the Hummers in the seats and the lack of headroom, um, you're looking at about 45 for their top end model, right? Maybe 47. Um, there, I I don't think I don't think Nissan wants to throw out some kind of crazy, ridiculous, expensive truck, and I think that they could build one and make money off of something right at the 45 range for the for all out badass truck. I don't. It, but it's not about him. it's not about building money. It's it's where's the market? Where's the benchmark of the market now? And now we won't take Wrangler and and Bronco as benchmarks because they're just completely different. Even though our our Nissan friends are going to go, well, you know, my new Frontier is just as capable. Um, Danny, it's it's look at look at. You, you can kind of throw Gladiator in this because it's sort of a truck. Uh, ZR2, you're not getting a ZR2 for 53 to 55, if I remember right. Uh, TRD Pros are definitely in the 50s. And this, uh, uh, they're, 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 in, they're in the mid forties. You, 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 I think the only thing that you're going to find up in the, up in the high fifties is like a Rubicon, uh, or not a Rubicon, like a, uh, uh, sorry, you just said the truck. The oh, Jupiter. the Gladiator. Uh, gladiator. I think maybe the Gladiator. It's the tip of the iceberg with the every 
bell and whistle and but those are marked up because of of you course, know, of course, lame yeah. Jeep stuff. Yeah, but I, I would, I would say that 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 Nissan would want to, like, they'd want to be competitive. But they're, I don't know. I just, I don't see Nissan putting out a sixty thousand or even a fifty thousand dollar Nismo who, version of the Frontier. Who I think that'd thought, be ridiculous. No, nah, dude. Who would have thought you would have had a Titan, which they couldn't sell? Gen One sold okay, but who would have thought you'd had a sixty thousand dollar Titan, Danny? Well, let's let's do this. Let's the gen, the, the gen, I want can, I want some comments. Who's back in Dave and who's back in me on this one? Right. Because I, Dave I, I totally Danny. disagree with I totally disagree with Dave on the fact that that Nissan has any oh, Dan that, you that can, Nissan you would get, ever put out a sixty thousand dollar mini truck. You could get a Pro Four X Gen One Titan, a two thousand fifteen, thirty five thousand dollars. Now that same truck, sure, we're five years later. That same truck is fifty five to sixty thousand dollars, man. Now, granted, now the tech, you're talking about a Titan, right? Yeah, yeah. But here's my this is my point. So a Pro Four X will say right now is I think thirty seven thousand retail decked out for for the, for a Pro Four X Frontier. So now you've the right big, now yes retail no way dude yeah. the, right now no you can get them for thirty three no, no, all day. No, no. What, I'm not saying what you can get them for. We're talking retail. I don't dealers whatever they do i i I haven't seen anything for over 35 i think 35 is the benchmark for okay we'll say 35 now let's say 35 35 is legitimate so you take that that same titan that was that was thirty five thousand dollars. now that's selling for fifty five sixty thousand dollars. the mid-sized truck market is the hottest market in cars and trucks right now don't think that nissan don't want to share that man it's a brand new truck that's got to start paying for itself you know, this current truck's been paid for for five to ten years. This truck, that if they do a truly decked out Pro 4X, we'll say we know they're going to do a Pro 4X. So we'll use that as yeah. our top level, dude. Pro 4X, I guarantee you, is forty eight thousand dollars retail. Bam. All right, 48. I, I got, I got, I got a solid twenty dollars and a nice bottle of bourbon on this. Dude. I'm talking like all right, you guys heard bourbon. this. Where, where right are here. you guys? To let it, like Danny was asking earlier, where so, are so, you guys? So Dave, you're, you're, yeah. So Dave, saying you're saying four, forty nine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say four nine nine nine. Yes, four nine nine nine. So Dave's at fifty thousand. <laughs> Let's just make it clear. Let, and we're talking there. loaded. We're talking loaded. Price. I'm saying, I'm saying it's not gonna go over forty thousand dollars. Right. I, let, let, let me back up. I, oh. I will say it's not going to go. It's not going to go. Oh, it, it won't even. It will not go over forty-five. Wow! Notice, guys, how Danny just jumped five grand. Like, like he knows I'm right. It's a thing. He's just playing devil's egg. I can see it in your face, Dan. You know, personally, personally, I think that they would put it at thirty-nine nine ninety nine. <laughs> Maybe sell them for forty thousand dollars or whatever. With, with you know, you're Let's a see. little bit over Next forty thousand for a decked top, out. Nissan top Frontier. answer on the board is ding. We'll find out. We'll find out this spring. But um, yeah, Joe Taylor, you were asking, asking, or you were asking if I said spring of 2021. Yes, I said spring of 2021. Yeah. It's it was due to be out around February. Once again, 90 days. Everything's 90 days. Now, granted, I think that they're gonna push. They're pushing to get that truck out. But their Nissan's focus right now is Rogue Pathfinders coming up. Uh, Aria, which even though Aria for the United States isn't due out till next fall, that's yeah. the, that's the three things they're they're worried about right now. Even though Frontier, we're all truck lovers, yeah, it's not it's not there yet. It's not in there. Once they show that thing unbadged, then they're going to focus, and it, you're going to see it. You're going to see. Uh, I guarantee you, who you see, you're going to see Sean Holman drive that, who I just talked about. And what was the one dude from Ohio that was on the Titan Adventures, the big dude, uh, whatever his name is, he's going to be in it. And uh, they're going to find, uh, oh, uh, uh, Emmy, uh, she's going to be in it. And uh, I can't think the the blonde hair lady from uh, um, California. Uh, she's with uh, KBB. Anyways, those are the, because those people are like this with Nissan PR. So yeah especially at holman but well anyways, is that with the old is that with the old guard of still with the PR. pr is that the new guy you know who i hope we don't see in that truck is uh brie larson but that's a that's a i conver- agree that's a totally conversation agree. different for another day. different conversation so um, dave so dave let's let's just let's just take it let's just do a quick homage to the 2020 titan which was totally and completely stuffed into the friggin ether by new frontier talk yes and COVID. Because it should have been hitting stores 
uh you know we drove it they were they were off to a they were God, off we to drove a, that in november dan i know that's what i'm saying it should have been hitting stores early in the year and now it's like you haven't heard a single thing from nissan in, in true nissan form they have a new truck out uh i i don't even know can you buy it? You, yeah. yes you can yeah. I've, seen, I've seen i've seen I'm, people buying them i'm seeing them in, in my area but it's just like but i'm a hot have you form. heard or seen anything about their new time Nope, not a commercial, not nothing. In classic Nissan fashion, they have a decent truck, a uh, really fun truck, and in classic Nissan fashion, they're just going to let it die. They're just going to let it sell its mediocre numbers and all that oh, money. It's almost Dan, like they're cutting their losses. Joseph there, the Tacoma is almost 50K. I would think they'd want to compete with that. Boom. See? There they know. Tacoma's Our 46. Know. Loaded Tacoma no. is 46. Not the TRD Pro. Not the yes, not the, the whatever TRD the Pro is 46000 dollars There's some new pro level. I don't know. Anyways, guys, we'll fight. Me and Danny will fight about them. Just because we like arguing and debating with each other. We could both be right and we'll still fight with each other about it. Um Yeah. It's because Dave's not very smart. You know what I will say part of part <laughs> of uh well, maybe. Um, I was smart enough to start a Nissan show, right? <laughs> that, yeah, doesn't, right. that doesn't bode Point. well for me. <laughs> Point Danny. <laughs> hey, Danny, cheers, buddy. Cheers on that. Um, but um, yeah, I think part of Titan's problem is is that uh, you've got new leadership over there. They don't know what to do. Nobody knows what to do with Titan. And this kind of bodes into where the, the conversation I wanted to go, and I'm glad you brought this up, was – Nissan versus Ford and these other companies, there's no focus at all. And I'm not dogging. If you work at Nissan and I'm friends with you or whatever, I'm not crapping on you. It all comes from the top. But Nissan America has no focus. Look it's a at bunch J of different. It's a bunch of different entities vying for their specific um, baby that they're yep. working on. And each person, each little entity was probably getting their their five minutes of fame, whether it's the the Aria or the Frontier mm -hmm. or the whatever it is, it's these entities. There's no, yeah, it's it's almost like a, it's a it's like a team of individuals. If you were playing a sport, and let's just say you were playing soccer, because that's what I do, and you have a Messi and you have a you have a R Ronaldo, and they're all you know they're great players, each and every one of them. But if they don't play together, they're shit. You know, like if you never get a pass over to to Ronaldo, he's never going to score the goal. And so you could have a bunch of players that do amazing things, but until they come together as a team and start, start, you know, really working as a, as a focused group, it's, it's just going to be, it's, it's going to be more of what we have seen, you know, just well, milk toast. Well, and it, you, <laughs> it, it is that, and, and part of it, and I've made excuses for them in the past, which are not really excuses. It is true. Like funding for, for marketing and stuff is very slim. Which is why yeah. they need one of these vehicles has to be a, a complete hit for Nissan. And the Frontier is about the closest thing. Uh, Rogue will sell. Rogue will be sort of a hit for them. But as far as like publicity, they need something like Rogue is, I think the new one's exciting and nice, but it's not exciting enough to people go, oh my God, look at Nissan, man. They're coming back. You know, Hyundai, yeah. Hyundai had a problem with image. Like Nissan is very much in that 2000s Hyundai category right now. They build a solid car. Yeah. But there's no brand image. There's no kind of anything. And Hyundai went and hired, a, I forget, I think he was part of Cadillac. And they gave him the reins. Here's our cars. Here's the platforms. Make them better. And they freaking did it. They turned that company around. Yeah. Now, Hyundai was also spending some money on advertising. Like, you'll see them. You'll see their NFL commercial ads. You'll see them everywhere. Um but Nissan, like you were saying earlier, Dan, they just, it's like everybody has a pet project over there. And when they can steal some funding to get their pet project, some, some notoriety, then it takes away from something else. And then suddenly like the focus is like, well, it's all over the place, but Nissan definitely has a brand image problem. And our buddy Joe Taylor there asked, what did we think about the new logo? Now, I will say I, I don't really consider it much of a new logo. It's it is definitely a rebranding of sorts. Um, I thought that when they launched it with Aria, it didn't make sense. It should have been on Rogue. That 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 was your first 2021 vehicle. If you're rebranding your your image, and maybe they do put it on on the Rogue, and they just weren't ready to show it on the on the Rogue when they did that. But I like it, man. I, I, I think it's it's very modern. And I, I think, you know, as we talk for about Nissan off-road, 
versus Nissan car-ish thing. I think Nissan's went all in on we're going sedans, we're going SUVs, and electric vehicles. And as far as trucks, I'm a little worried, Danny, that trucks are just... Like, there's been things, me and you've talked privately about the Frontier that I've seen that just makes me scared. Because the Titan just... I've said this many times. The Titan, the inside is what sold me on my last Titan. It wasn't the outside because I think the outside is one of the ugliest trucks I've ever seen. And that sounds harsh. And I can say this now <laughs> since I don't really own one. That was – okay, so Dave – But it, so it, Dave, it, it really, Danny, it, to me, it, it's confusing. It's part Ford. It's part the, – the, the two-tone is sort of Ram. Like I don't – it's not Nissan. For me, for me, it grew on me. Uh, initially, I wasn't sold on it. Uh, once I saw him a little bit more on the road, um, and truly, once once you know a couple people threw some lifts on him, and they they looked a million times better. I, I drove by one the other day, and I was like, "Wow, that's a beautiful looking truck." Um, I think they did an amazing job of just tweaking the front end in a 2020 to make it look. They did, yes. I, I think it was the, an amazing job of taking a truck that you're like, something's just not right about. You know, it just looks kind of like like a big dumb oaf in the front of it, and they yes. tweaked it. And now I think it looks amazing. Like I really, really want one. It's not going to happen, but I, you know, I really like that truck, and I love mm-hmm. the way it looks now. Um, but they 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 did miss the mark a little bit, I think, on initially. Um, and you know, maybe it's a little bit too a little too late. I think could be the problem in in that scenario. I I, I would tend to agree with you on that. That that. Even when in 16, when that truck came out, we've mentioned this many times, technology changed overnight and Nissan was caught with their pants down with that. Like they were not, they should have been the most modern truck in 16 when that truck hit. And suddenly it was when Ford brought the F 150s package out, suddenly they look old, man. Now, granted, the 2020 sort of cured that. Now, when I say sort of, they didn't get to the headlights, yes, they changed, but they, there was no stamping changed on that truck at all it's the same it, stamping it, i don't think i don't think it needed it though Dave. no I think but it should, i think the biggest problem with that truck was the grill i yes. i really and truly did yes. and if, you know this is of course personal opinion um you know there's a lot of people out there that think it's a beautiful truck um but let, let's let's move on to the fact that why is getting caught with your pants down a bad thing I personally, well, if you're at a truck stop, I don't caught. know. <laughs> in fact, sometimes I leave my pants in the closet so that way I can never get my pants. Get. <laughs> sometimes I like getting caught with my pants off. <laughs> right? No, but, but sorry. But, no, wait, it, we, when we got to test drive the 2020, like they definitely made leaps and strides. Like the, the new uh, infotainment center and everything is nice. Uh, I do finally like the, the color they gave the logo some color, which was nice. Uh, like you, I think the grill was just extremely too big. I do not like the Titan stamped in the front of that thing at all. And I love it. And I'm har- I'm being harsh right now, guys, because well, I'm, the the new tail lights are a million are. times Those, better. Oh God, yes. So, so good. I see a bunch of guys putting, and uh, there, there's guys spending the thousand dollars for like the factory right. tail lights to put on their new trucks, but the new tail lights are like hands down a thousand times better on the new truck. It just and that's the thing is like some of these small changes can absolutely totally change the look of a truck. And that's, you know what, this, this kind of goes into the, the aftermarket and, and, you know, you can take a truck, you throw a little lift on it and a couple different sets of taillights and grill or whatever. And all of a sudden that truck comes alive. Right. And I think that's, I think sometimes dealers or, or not dealers, uh, sometimes um, manufacturers, don't, it's like, they don't see it. It's like they, they, they make a, you know, they stamp out a truck and they're like, here it is. And everybody's like, yeah, it's all right. And then somebody puts some cool stuff on it. And you're like, wow, that truck had so much potential. It's like that girl in school who you're like, oh man, she's buster. But then like, then there's the one guy who's like, no, that chick is beautiful. And you're like, what are you talking about? And she puts on a little bit of makeup, does her hair up. And you're like, what happened, dude? That, that's not even the same girl, you know? Well, but that's, wait, wait that's till That's how they, it could be. Wait till I know on the tailgate of the frontier, I was told, a year ago that the tailgate of the frontier is going to be stamped like Ford does and Toyota does with frontier on it. But wait till they put that goofy stamping on the grill of the frontier that in and, and Titan is shorter letters than like frontier, which needs the whole front end of the truck to be noticeable. Like, I don't think, and this is going to, this is going to be my worst thing of the night. And I've said some horrible things so far today. Um, frontier, I guarantee you was designed by somebody 
that doesn't know trucks. Danny, we met the guy who had his hand refreshing the Titan, and that dude didn't know trucks. That dude was a, a Z guy all day long. That's what he loves. That's what he drives. And he had no confidence about him when we when we talked to him at the tit- last Titan press deal we went to. No confidence about him about about what he was trying to sell me as a here's why we did this. Now the guy they had the spokesman they had doing the presentation had confidence about it, but the guy that actually yeah, he was legit. The guy that actually was there, one of the engineers of the, of the redesign, he's not a truck guy. So what it's made me scared, and I've been very pro frontier, very excited about this next frontier. But after seeing these spy and I, shots, I, for, for the yeah, for the record, I think I'm still more. And of course, this this goes back to the the Dave and Danny show. I am a optimist. Dave is a pessimist. Very. Dave looks at the spy shots and he says. Uh, I don't know for sure, but it's giving me bad vibes. And I say, I don't know, man. That, there's some good stuff on the thing that I really am taking away that I like. One of the things, which I, we can go on and on about the spy shots again, uh, but I I saw in in the the kind of the layout the the design of the taillights I think are going to be very Titan like, and I think if they're anything like the the new Titan lights. Uh, rear tail lights. Well, I think our, those are going to look really freaking rad. Our buddy Frontier but, Lifestyle would be, he'd be super happy if they made it look tight. Uh, yeah, if it looked tight. And, um, uh... <laughs> anyways, um, so we obviously the interior Nissan, for whatever reasons, they can nail an interior. Like the zero gravity seats are amazing. Uh, what I've seen of the new Rogue is freaking amazing, which that has to blend into. Frontier some they're they're going to make a the nice interior. The interior is going to be very similar. I mean, I, you can almost but, call but it. But right you know now. what? What really after, especially after seeing this Bronco, I looked at the the twelve inch screen that they put in the Bronco. Looks like it belongs in that truck. I hate these screens that pop up on top of the dash. They just look like somebody was like, well, let's just let's it glued right there perfectly. Let's just do that. Um, they made that screen look like it belonged in that dash. I. It's got that big I, flat front front yeah, dash yeah. area with the screen that kind right. of sits in just right. Yeah, it, it, nervous, they did a really well. I'm nervous that what we've seen of the the front or the Titan, where they've added the new infotainment screen, it's good, but it's still sort of doesn't. The frontier, the frontier is going to have the one that sticks up. It's going to have the tablet. Look, you think it looks so? Like someone stuck it. To, what I do you so. guys think? Let us know in the comments here. What do you guys think? Will will they merge that screen into the dash, or like Danny said, or is it going to stick up and look like us? Where am I going to put my it's CV, gonna look like the, it's I think it's going to look just like the Rogue. The the screen, how they set up the screen, I think will look just like the Rogue, in a big kind of um, tablet looking style. I don't know if they're going to do those like. No, but I hate those no button touch things where it just show it's just oh, like I a need a light. I need a knob that in the Bronco doesn't have the only <sighs> I, I mentioned this Listen, in a Bronco group. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for some tactiles, man. I need a switch. Like, yes. give me a switch. If you need to put something on a switch or a knob or a dial, put it on a knob or a dial. If not, just put it on the touch screen. Yes. Don't give me some kind of weird thing where I got to search around and I don't even know if I pressed it. I don't I don't dig that at all. I think I think that that was uh, I it looks cool. That's about it. As well, far as I'm concerned, I don't Danny, think the user friendliness jo- is. Joe be good. Taylor said he thinks it'll be stuck up like a tablet. I think if they do that, it dates that car because Tesla's already starting to look old. Which Tesla was the the king of? Hey, let's stick it up in the dash, and it made everybody all of a sudden start. Well, doing the, the that. Tesla had like this waterfall screen. I mean, Tesla had like a 50 inch plasma <laughs> that they stuffed into the front, and it was like part of this waterfall dash. I mean, it was red. I mean, it's it's pretty cool as far as like. Hey, this is this is the future of vehicles, you know, like like friggin' Buzz Lightyear came in here and said, This is what I need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh but the way that they're sticking these tablets where it's like it's it's almost like it's not part of the dash. You see right. it in the kicks, you see it in the Ultimas, um, you see it in, in the in the new road. Ramesh it's, Ramesh agrees with me, man. Ramesh Lance, look, please do not sit up uh, make the same screen I'm not set saying up that I like it. I'm truck. saying that's what I think that we were going to see. Oh, I think so. I definitely think like we've seen their use of their design traits other than this previous or the current frontier, because it's like 15 generations between that and something else. You know, I think they've had literally, let's see. Oh, fives when that truck came out. Maximus on its third iteration since that truck came out. 
Maximus so, going to die. Oh, Maximus is <laughs> dead. That's dead. That's for another show. But that that car is dead walking. Yeah. Um, but like, but like you said, a truck needs to be manly. I, it needs, and, and I, I agree with you, David. I, is, I think having a big flat screen built into the dash, you know, because I I got that desert racer feel. A nice like big, just kind of like what Ford did, where it's yeah. like a, it's almost like here's my nav unit, you know, and that's yeah. where it sits inside my dash, you know. Um, this is my control center for my for my spaceship. That's what you want. You don't want to like. Uh, this is my futuristic car from Minority Report. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Which you know I had some cool Lexuses in there, but um, like all my movie, I'm throwing out some all kinds dude, of weird movie are. references you tonight. Are. I don't know what's going on. I'm just waiting for the Uncle Buck reference or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or the Great Outdoors. Let's uh, <laughs> what was the guy, the old man in Great Outdoors? He's like, oh, he's been. If you ever want to know what the the weather's like, just look at old Bob over here, and he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, he was hit by lightning. He's like, he's like, oh, six times, huh? Oh man, no, six sixty two times. You're like, oh damn. That's you know we're gonna start pulling out these really old school reference maybe some pretty in the pink you know pretty in the pink <laughs> pretty pink yeah references. uh you know what uh Ramesh Lance uh Ramesh Lance made a good uh point with the uh, F one fifty dash looks amazing and let me let me step back one second here and say that Ford has been doing a really good job of creating like usable spaces and, and and flat spots yeah. and the, with their table in there they're, they're just oh, like that table very, dude, like don't go there man that table but what i'm saying is that they're working at making like usable space in your cab which for an overlander off-roader uh construction worker and all these people that's it's a good way to move for a truck a truck is a utility vehicle and even if we talk about whether you know and we could go on and on about whether they bring the Xterra back whether they bring the bronco or the the patrol in to fight the bronco which will never happen but we wish it would yep um that the usability and the functionality of these things it's something that you can do it just throw a couple engineers on it you can you can make that happen for the next vehicle and it's it's imp- it's important to have that stuff one you know it might be catchy but if you do it right that's like that's like the the, the exterior it had the folding seat where the front right mm-hmm. seat yeah. in the couple in the in the certain models would fold flat and it was so rad i didn't even know it in my in my 06 and then i folded it flat i'm like wow this is rad this you know when danny so folded that flat when he was pulling it out to get it to make a race truck here we go dave got jokes <laughs> <laughs> yeah right that was After like I eight years ago it, i realized that was it a, would come what? out the door easier <laughs> your race truck but, was like eight years ago something like that anyways i i'm just picking with danny uh but you are right like they, there are some things like that but i think ram out of all of them has really like ram used to have the they went from having the worst interior to having to me to the, the best, best and that's, interior and that's how they that's how they started really making a huge comeback now they've made a huge comeback and that was because they put a lot of work into the interior of their vehicle J- joe taylor really jo- nice joe taylor don't be sad i mean the bronco doesn't come out till spring 21 or yeah, of 21 too. So I mean, come, come on, they've already showed us that one. Um, think about all the people that have to wait. Uh, what is that like nine or ten months for their their new 2021 Broncos? You should be really sad about that. Um, Those poor saps. And uh, Brian B, yeah, Maxima is not dead. It's just changing to an EV. I would agree with that. Yep. I would I have agreed. I would agree. With I that. would have agreed with that six months ago. Now Nissan's in a different place, and they don't need that car in the market it's playing in anymore. You don't uh, think we'll they're see. gonna fight fight for some Tesla's market? Mm, I don't know. We'll save that. We'll save that topic for another show. Maybe yeah, that's next another week. show. Um, so Danny, let's that, talk. Let's talk about patrol. Let's talk about patrol in a dream world, Dave. Ooh, oh, we're we're dreaming now. When dream you're world. Dreaming with a broken heart. All right, Dave. <laughs> real quick, let's touch on this real quick because this is something that, of course, me and you have both uh, thought about, and it, it, it's kind of like a the sad little monkey in the room who's yanking in the corner. Um, so <laughs> I'm throwing poop. <laughs> Nissan, Nissan has the patrol. Yeah. They had the patrol for forever. It is the Jeep of every other country for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. Australia, all over the, the middle East. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's two door, it's four door and it is off road icon. It has all the things that you would see in Jeep in the United States. How is it? How is it that Nissan never 
and has and has yet to bring the patrol over here designed it correctly so that that so that it can work over here and fought for that that market share it, it's it it it's crazy that they don't see that that vehicle bring over an updated version and the the the, the two door and four door could absolutely and totally fight for that that same pot of gold well so what we call a patrol now i will say is I've got plenty of friends in Australia and they keep bugging me to fly over and drive their patrols. They're, the market that patrol really kicks ass in is the EU and Australia. Other than that, let's be honest, any more that... Well, the, the new the new patrol. You're talking yes. about the new patrol. But, You're talking about the, the Armada size patrol. Yes. But not, I'm, I'm basically referring to... Oh, I know. The, and the I, I want to say up until the recently, you could you could be... Yeah, you could, you could buy them... Um, in their 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 true old old fashion you know um and that's kind of what i'm talking about i'm not i'm not talking about the the uh full size suv well, i think but, but I we think have to talk about like, what they're building now i i agree right like, but but they could like that name and that style and that but and you, that, and you that fight me on this you fight me on this they have something they can control call a patrol here for the united states in the terra and you're like no no don't do that <laughs> See, like you're 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 sort of contradicting yourself on this because you want it, but you just don't want it how they could actually bring the, it to us. The game has changed as of last week. It, that it has. It, that it has. The game has changed. I, I I I could get on board with calling the Terra the Patrol until last week, and now there is a heavy hitter <laughs> saying this is what you should buy, and we have done these things. Nissan has the Patrol, which has become an icon everywhere else but the United States. And the United States, I mean, with the age of the internet, everybody knows what a patrol is, or and if they don't, it's very easy to find out what it is. They can they can use that history and that 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 lineage of what the patrol was across the U.S. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I got some beer burps, fellas. Um, and I, I would say that that doing the patrol as a Terra at this point, as of this week, would be the worst idea you could do because it is not. It is not a. It wouldn't be a true patrol. It wouldn't be that two door, that four door, serious off roader, serious adventure vehicle. The Terra should be the Terra. Should be the X Terra. No, it can't. Be well, that. We, we know it can't be X Terra. We know that for a fact. I, I, I know it can't be that. But what I'm saying is, that it should be the the next step for an X Terra. It should be a very capable on off road. You know, kind of fighting yeah, but, fighting for that forerunner spot or whatever. Come Especially on, man. if. The Pathfinder is always going to be a minivan. Let me piss off some Gen 2 Xterra guys here. The the Gen 2, the 05 to 15 Xterra, was only half-hearted attempt at being an off-road vehicle. The Gen 1, which was, I think, was uh, it was more truck. It was built, it was built on a specific truck frame, a better frame than what the Gen 2 got. Um, and I know Nissan Nissan employees that build it said. I've talked to them and they were like, well, I'd rather have the gen ones frame than the gen two. Like it was, it was real, a truly box frame, not a ladder frame, not, not a half ass box frame. Now that's not me crapping on, on the it's frame. It's a full box. What are you talking about? It's a full box frame. Dude, dude, don't, let's not get into this. Let me finish. My oh, let let's no. Okay. You, you <laughs> say your piece, Dave, before I rip your <laughs> hole into a freaking black one, dude, a black hole. <laughs> uh, but the gen one was truly everything you need. Nothing you don't. The Gen 2 got to be a pig. And yeah, they offered a locker and off they they did an off-road package and let's let's just sort of give them a locker and that's it. Oh, and let's let's put the bills, let's buy some bills that are just garbage, the 4600s which are just garbage bills. Let's put them up a, a a half inch and then we'll give it a half inch taller tire and look, it's lifted. Oh, it's a great package. Now, Danny, for what you're saying, if they did a Terra or whatever you're you know, you're dreaming of, it would have to be front rear lockers. It would be better. It, you're talking about the in the Terra. Yes, if if that's the that's the most reasonable platform we know they build right now that could actually be an SUV off roader. So they would have to have the three seven, which we know it would probably get. But yeah. Bronco or three with, three eight. You mean right? Bronco with a small block V six twin turbo, four hundred foot pounds of torque. Like that that three seven is never going to get there unless you turbo it. Um, like three, three, eight. Yeah. The three, eight, but the, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, but is it, a, it's a two, seven. I'm sorry. It's a two, seven in the Bronco small yes. block V six that 
just kills everything right now. Torque numbers, everything destroys them. And then you the the way they put the crawl gear in it for the the manuals. Now you can't get that yeah. in the v in that in that uh, engine, but like they would have to like get serious about it. the transfer case in the Gen Two, Danny. I don't care what you said. A manual transfer case in that Gen One was so much better than the electronic transfer case they put in the Gen Two. I understand. I understand why they went to electronics because it's easier for the the daily driver to push that or twist the knob, and it it, it does its thing. Um, <laughs> oh, Danny. I'm just wait. I'm just waiting. <laughs> Danny's ready to chew just me. Get up. it out. Get it um, out, Dave. I'm about to light this mother or up. <laughs> but ultimately, the Gen Two was for its time period was okay. But look at the FJ Cruiser, Danny. The FJ Cruiser was well ahead of what – now, I won't say looks-wise and, and visually, like you can't look out the back of the thing. You never see what's behind you. But I think that Nissan did a half-assed attempt at that, and it sold okay. And, I'm dude, I own one. Here's the thing is I own one of these things, and I love it for what it is. The 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 interior was, was to today's standards, not even close. Even the Terra that I've seen – not even close to today's standards, Danny. So if you want that truck, it better come in a 10-inch screen. It better come in an actual good, decent front wheel uh, locker. It better come in. There better not be, as we talked about Bronco, it better not come in an aluminum case or else you know it's going to blow up. And there you go, Dan. Lay, lay me out, buddy. Sh- give me give me the All facts. Right, Dave, as, as an owner of a premium model of both an Xterra and a Frontier, or I'm sorry, both Xterras, first and second gen. The only thing I loved about the first gen Xterra was the, the the ground clearance right off the bat. The second gen Xterra, it doesn't matter what you say. The motor was hands down five. I, I've million... never mentioned. I never mentioned Listen, the motor. This is I my never, turn. It's I my ne- turn. I it's never my turn. mentioned the motor. <laughs> I never did it. The motor is hands down. I did not have sexual relations with that girl. (laughs) So superior to the 3.3 liter. It, 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 Mm -mm. it it Mm -mm. takes away so many points. RPS. That that thing can listen. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. (laughs) Yes, you did. You did too. That, that 3.3, that 3.3 is an RPM revving machine versus versus. And I think the four liter is a better motor. Don't get me wrong. Listen, your, your throat needs to shut for a minute. I hope you eat some peanuts and have an allergy. I'm out. The the motor Wait. the motor is so much better. The four liter motor is an amazing motor. It's a badass motor. That that I, I I'm I, I'm more and more of a fan of it every day uh, with my truck with the tuning uh, and the possibilities of it. So one, the motor is so much better in the second gen. Number two, the reason the second gen started having problems is because of the economy. Oh, that I we had a yeah. massive we had a massive struggle with gas prices. Um, cafe standards, etc., etc., etc. The ground clearance was the big problem. It didn't have the ground clearance. However, the amount of travel made it so much smoother off road. What travel? The f- the fact it has way more. Tra- the first Gen X Terra had like four inches of travel, and if you wanted to get it lifted, you had to put like all kinds of crazy stuff on it just to get like an extra inch. The you second mean, you gen, mean you, you could had throw to a turn- Titan swap to get eleven inches of travel. You had the to first turn- gen. You had to. You had to put a total chaos kit, which cost you five thousand dollars, just to get a long travel out of it. The only way you can get travel out of it is long. Listen, Dave, you can get way more travel out of it by throwing a couple, a set of upper control arms and a good set of coilovers out of it. You have a much stronger. Uh, um, sorry, you, you're throwing me off. <laughs> the switch for the for the uh, the transfer case rarely have i seen problems other than it no, like, notice, stand, like standard he's, problems he's, he's pointing out all the problems it rarely did guess what my manual transfer case does bam right in there yeah bam right in there and then your freaking shitty hubs blew up because all the <laughs> hubs in them the automatic locking hubs exploded then you had to get the manual ones from warren oh, no, and those were like hub. all right all right a little bit better which were like 70 bucks but then you had to get out of your car and turn those then all of a sudden you're back in a four-wheel drive all the time it's it's it was it was a it was not a terrible truck, but it it wasn't it wasn't that pristine that that well formed uh, second generation of truck. And the only reason it didn't explode like the first gen was 
was because of the the rising gas prices. And that that truck is a little bit of a hog, but sometimes you trade hog for mad horsepower and mad torque. That motor was murdering, murdering. In 02, Ford came out with a, a 210 horsepower V6, and they ran that V6 for forever. In 05, a couple years later, 05, Nissan came up with a 268 horsepower V6. 261, 261. Torque, 261. And, and with even more torque. Was it 280 something? 281. Whatever. Yeah. That motor from 05 until what, 2013, 2014, was the most powerful V6 motor on the market, hands down. Murdered, and still to this day, I'll go murder Toyotas all day long. And there's like new Toyotas that are that are still trashed. The torque curve's not there. That that motor made. And on top of it, you get a locker, Dave. That locker is solid. Maybe in the early years they had some spider gear problems. They fixed it. Notice he keeps putting in all the problems. Well, they had a problem here, but the Gen One well, had zero problems, Dan. The Maybe, Gen- oh, I'm sorry, it had zero a, problems. It had a, the a steering, manifold. The a manifold. steering was so the steering on that thing was so loose. You had to, if you actually wanted to steer it, you had to replace st- everything in the steering like multiple times, and then it was still barely acceptable. With the ra- yeah, the the did you lay me out yet, Dan? Did you lay me out? Uh, I'm roping doping over here, man. This is this is this is a the a, a conversation of the ages. Dave. It is. I mean, it is. No, know, I like. There's on. definitely there's definitely things to Gen Two. Like obviously, it was going to improve on on the previous generation, but it got bigger, Danny. You you know that that it got bigger. And and it as far as an off road, more beautiful. As far like as an, cur- it was like that curvy girl that you're like, yeah. You know what? She just is like a good wine. She's just aging really well. Maybe she put a couple pounds on, but she holds it well. That's right. She man. didn't. But but her motor was strong, so she could handle that weight. Her ticker but Dave, could hold let's, that. Huh? Let's 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 just talk real quick. I I, I don't want to I don't want to pass over this fact that we we moved into the Xterra. I think if, in in a dream world, if Nissan said, "Let you know what, f these Bronco guys, f these freaking Wrangler guys." Let's bring the patrol over and let's bring it back to its roots. Let's like it like the the patrol and the Z are in the same category of of amazingness. I would in agree. my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. And maybe not in the United States, but in the in the in the grand scheme of of automotive history, if they brought a similar product to the Bronco that they had they they have built back in the day, and they throw the same kind of off-road potential in it that oh god that would be so amazing could you imagine and of course this is dream world and i'm not talking at all about what nissan will do because nissan's stupid these days but could you imagine a world where nissan patrol came here and they said bronco you look pretty good we got the same thing we got a patrol i think that there would be a huge batch of people that would go wow this Nissan thing, I get it, dude. Well, much these like, guys in Australia have been holding out on us. Much like Bronco, because because before, like last <laughs> week, the average American couldn't have told you what a Bronco was. They just couldn't have. Now I disagree. No, but no, but let's go listen. on. But so I mean, yeah, they knew what it was. You think Bronco? The last thing you thought was OJ Simpson going down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but you are correct that Ford listened to their core, like their hardcore core. And it was like, okay, we can bring that name plate back. And if we do, we need to do it right. Now, Nissan, who I've talked to about this, about using patrol name, which was like they've debated it. And for whatever reasons, for there's a certain demographic that likes the Armada. Uh, but I think Armada is a pig for what we want to do. Now, in Australia, they seem to make it work because they don't have as many options as we do. Um, yeah. And I was and saying it, it, early- ha- it has it has some chops out there. It's got right. the transfer lock, and it's got it's got a little bit more chops as far as an off road right. thing. I mean, again, you're gonna be well, I think what out they there, get. They're like seventy thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars. But what? But what, shit, what they get though? Uh, they actually have locker options, and, and yeah, that's and what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's got better, way better chops than what we got. Right. But I think, like, I do think that if they were to bring the Terra here. And call it. Would you be happy if they said, "Okay, we're bringing the terror here. We're going to do a front rear locker." Look at Danny's like access to to beverages. I, I, I monster guys, monster. You need a beer I need, fridge. I need, I need just like reach back here and go. 
Get, guys, can can we get a can we get a super chat for Dave's beer fridge? <laughs> yeah, I need a beer fridge back here. Can we help me with that? Um, so but but some, would you be okay bucks. if you would you be okay because Nissan's known to be cheap when they need something in a new market they usually just pluck like Kicks was in the Brazilian market they're like hey let's throw that in the U S or uh, the Kosh Kai let's call it a Rogue Sport would you be okay if they took the Terra and gave us a decent off roader now it's never going to be De Bronco. And they gave us a rear locker, which I think the Terra gets now. They uh, gave us a front locker, 3.8 liter. Would you be okay if they said, now we're going to call that a patrol or a patrol sport? To you get it, what? for with us the, to get with it. The current, with the current climate, I, I'd i go with it. I'd, I'd be happy. I would go um, with it. But I, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I would think that it was kind of a little bit of a cheapening. Hmm. Personally, I mean, if they had a front and rear locker, that'd be a big, big, big step. That'd be a huge step, I think. But um, Bronco just set that benchmark, so it's if you're going to do something truly, call it an off-road. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree. I agree. Bronco has set a benchmark that's really, really high for everybody to try and obtain. Um, it, it, I mean, it would kind of come down to the actual real specs on the truck. Um, you know, how much, how much travel does the front end have? How, what kind of a front? differential does it have do you know does it have a like a nice big beefy differential or did they did they milk toast that's the second milk toast re reference did they milk toast out the the front diff and the travel out of it? you know did they how did they set the front suspension up and might i add the one thing that i will say of the bronco cast aluminum front lower control arms i can guarantee you every single person out there that is a fab shop is waiting to design some steel lower control arms I'm not a believer in cast uh, cast aluminum uh, it's, control it's, arms. It's done well in the uh, in the the Raptor. Yeah, but I, I I'm not I'm not a believer in them. I've I've seen I've seen broke. Yeah, uh, that that'll be one of the first things that you see getting sold on these things. All right, but, so hey, let me. There's a couple questions. I don't want to miss these. So Joe Taylor asked. Yeah, for Dave, sure. Will, Dave, will we be uh, release uh, the Frontier be released in the spring on or on dealer lots in the spring? Joe, till you learn that super chat button. I can't tell you anything anymore because you've had like four weeks to learn what the super chat button is. I'm only, messing, <laughs> I'm only messing with you, Joe. Um, no, I think you will see it late spring on dealer lots. I think, I think you're going to see it in the next month or two. They're going to, they're going to yeah, show things it. Things haven't wrapped, things haven't um, ramped up to the point to where they can really start doing but, what they want to do. I think in that scenario. And, and to that, I will say the one flaw I can find in Ford's release of the Bronco is the packages. It's super, super confusing. They released too much. They should have just showed us the thing and showed it on 35s and been done with it. And then in a month or so, they shouldn't have allowed people to buy. I guess you had to allow people to buy in on it right then just because there was so much hype. But the one flaw I can find in Bronco is is that they, like, I was looking through these packages going, hmm, if I was going to buy one, which one would I get? Yeah, and, me too. And... I was like, Jesus. Okay, so they, you know, base model starts at twenty eight thousand with a manual transmission and something nobody's gonna buy, honestly. A manual. You don't manual, think somebody's gonna no, buy no, a manual? But I mean, in base, let's. I'm talking just base in general. Okay. Nobody's I buying a strictly that. base. You're gonna do the mid trim package, and you're gonna want the Sasquatch. Like, who doesn't want the Sasquatch package in that truck? Because yeah, actually, you, the new the Sasquatch. Me, me and my buddies have talked about this. I'll let you get right back to it. Okay. The new Sasquatch. The Sasquatch package. To me, for 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 any of me and my buddies, the Sasquatch package means you're running 35s. Yes. So so now when if somebody's like you Sasquatching, that means you're running 35s. <laughs> that is the new term for 35 inch tires. You, you, you Sasquatch, Sasquatch yet? Bro? No, I haven't Sasquatch yet. Uh, let's see. There was another question. Uh, Kelly, uh, would the manu would they manufacture the Terra slash Patrol in the United States? Yes, they almost have to anymore because. Yeah. Um, chicken tax is one reason why we never got the true patrol, uh, for their stupid importing anything trucks. So, which is why that the frontier started being built in the United States to begin with, or the hard body. Um, but yeah, the, and, and Nissan said when I worked for Nissan in 11, they talked about how they wanted by, I forget the date, but they wanted, uh, I think it was almost 90% of what they make built in the United States because the, the value of the yen to the dollar, the way it fluctuates all the time, it's, it gets expensive to import vehicles like Z Z will yeah, never, yeah, Z will yeah. never be built in the United States. I can guarantee you that. 
uh, GTR and I would, I would, would, I would go be. so far as to say, Dave, real quick. Sorry, I would go so far as to say too is is especially with the with the the current president and the you know the the trade uh, negotiations that are going on. I, I imagine there's a, especially as of recently, the incentives to manufacture in the United States are probably just going up and going up. Um, and then on top of that, if you're going to make any kind of a truck. Um, having the fact that it's made in the it, we'll, we'll say truck and suv which is a little bit more of the masculine type of vehicle right um the fact that you can say that it's made in the usa is a really really big deal that's um, one thing you can I say th- about i think the titan. that's a, very important you can say about the titan and even tundra versus uh the big three is hey we still build them in the united states and i know yeah. a couple of those sort of are but you know um, yeah. not really, you know, I, I, I found something interesting. I was listening to, uh, I believe it's uh Tundra 34 or whatever his channel is. He, he's, you know, big, big Toyota guy, but, or no, this might've been Tim, Tim with the pickup truck and SUV talk was talking. The only reason that supposedly the Tundra doesn't sell more is because they've reached capacity at that plant in Texas because they build so many Tacomas. Uh, but mm-hmm. I'm like, dude. I don't. I don't think that. I. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think the Tundra is selling as well as. I mean, I, it, I can. Not, I can see that 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 because they sell so many Tacomas, they there's no point in pushing more Tundras through there, mm-hmm. and so they're like, uh, we only make like 50 Tundras <laughs> yeah. every month. So no, they actually sell uh, about. And there's nine more grand. demand on Toyota, so we we just run Toyotas through here all of the time. Yeah, so I could see that, but it's it's not because the Tundra is so amazing. It's because the. Tacoma is has brainwashed every single um, American uh, off road guy. There was another the, uh, Ramesh. Any chance that the 2021 Frontier might get a manual, even in a couple years after the lease? No. If they don't release it in, for, uh, from the get go in a manual, you're never going to see a manual transmission in that thing. Um, I really think the only thing manual you're ever going to see again is a Z, and I think the 400 Z or whatever they're going to call it will be a. They, it will have an option for that because for one, they make a killer. They they do know how to make a cool manual transmission. And two, I think it's the super missed the mark on it. And all the fanboys wanted a manual transmission Supra or BMW, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um and BMW is like, look, we're not making and you, we're not making a manual you see transmission. Z, BMW's coming out with their new Z and it looks exactly like the same. Does it really? Exact- oh oh god. I th- we have a testing center over here and I, yeah. I saw a new Z the other day. I'm like it's but it was it had it, it was a BMW yeah. obviously because that's yeah. where they that's where oh, they, you're talking they about run the them around. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so BMW has their test center over here. So I I see BMWs all day that are that are uh, placard up or whatever, uh, with that that special, you know, uh, eye googling stuff. Uh, and I saw I saw a Z the other day and I was laughing because I was like, that look, there is no difference whatsoever than the Supra, but it's their new Z4, whatever they're gonna call it, yeah. you know, Z5, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it just cracked me up the second I saw it. I was like, man, those super guys must have just been. It's it's like it's like it's like a really really it's like a straight dude seeing a transvestite who's <laughs> amazingly beautiful, and they're the, like, I'll get it, man. <laughs> the views and opinions of the Nissan of Danny are not the views and opinions of the Nissan Nation. Uh, that's a very controversial, but it's kind of like they they were so hungry, they're willing to throw out whatever. They're like, "Cool, man, I'm down well, for whatever." Well, BMW dude, as in general, you, as long as you put the sticker on it, I'll do it, dude. Well, BMW in general, man, their their new Seven Series and stuff is just one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It's like the grill is is about taller than the car. It's like a Mack truck they just shoved on the front of the car. So. Yeah. But that's they, a different they have, channel. They ha- yeah, we we're not to be so. Into and speaking of it, because I would go on forever about them. Speaking stuff. of a different channel, guys. So I need the nation's help on this. So we've talked about truck life forever. And me and Danny were going to do a truck specific show, but the the name never stuck to us. But it came time this week to uh, to break out the new channel. So. Obviously, me and Danny, we know more than just Nissan, and we like talking a little bit more than just Nissan. We know mad shit, bro. Yeah, <laughs> or we'll make you mad. Uh, but All Terrain Nation, if you guys would find that, and I'll find the link. I was looking for it a minute ago, and I couldn't find the link to my own channel. But All Terrain Nation is going to be our, one of our new channels that we're starting. I need 100 subs like yesterday, so we can do live streams like this on there. Um, and uh, to help the channel eventually get funded. So if you guys would go and I'll find a link and I'll put it on our Facebook page and our Instagram, uh, All Terrain Nation. And 
we're gonna we're gonna tackle all the brands. I mean, like right now, Bronco. We'll, is we'll get ex- we'll get deep in we'll get deep into Bronco yeah. a little bit more, and where where we don't feel bad about just talking pure Bronco yes. on a Nissan uh, show. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. But as you guys as you guys know, I like to dive super deep into the nuts and bolts. I mean, tonight I really like I could talk all night about how much how much it weighs, how much it tows, how much x oh, y z about the bronco don't, what's don't ask good, what what's it bad. toes jesus yeah. I, i'm in a front, i'm in a bronco page i can now tell you it's it's like 33 to 3500 pounds no but they're but all yes. like why can't this tow my house and you're like uh because it doesn't need it's to. not built for anything <laughs> near what you're trying to do um uh, yeah so so we we want we want to have an avenue where we can where we can do a lot of that stuff and uh yeah so give it give that a sub guys yes uh, and once again i will i will post the link if you if you haven't found it yet and like i said i was just looking for it and i have too many monsters and too much uh too much whiskey in me to to really find it right now um but but don't but don't think that we are going to leave no. some behind no and um, there a, was there was a race truck and a frontier and a 300z and dave and i we you know we are red-blooded americans who love nissans and I don't think that's going away anytime soon. No, but and at the it, same time, we want to make sure that we get out to the masses. So, we we really want to be able to hit all the stuff. Um, but at the same time, we love we love our Nissan community, and we want to. We're still gonna um, love you guys and and bring all the rad content. But at the same time, we want to you know we want to we want to dive deep into some of this uh this cool stuff that's happening all over all the other markets. Right, well. because it is for for especially truck guys, isn't it very exciting time right now? Yeah, like, like absolutely. There's so much absolutely. cool. There's so much cool tech coming out. Obviously, just the idea of somebody taking on Wrangler is is freaking amazing. So, um, I will. I once again, I will post that, and you're going to start hearing us talk a little bit more about that. I don't plan on launching that show till fall to late, maybe not even the first of the year. But I need to go ahead and get subs on there, and maybe me and Danny might pop a live stream in there or something if we can get a hundred subs. But, um, anyways, so. All terrain nation, find it, love it, because honestly, what the plan for that honestly is to that can do more funding wise than this show can ever do, but that will fund this show so we can continue to do the show. And me and Danny, honestly, we've talked about this a lot. We enjoy doing content for you guys. I mean, really do. And now, like everybody, who wouldn't want this as a job? Um, but we have the connections to do it. I just need to get all terrain nation kicking in. So that way, when I want to go cover you guys doing whatever you're doing at Nissan, I don't have to worry about, well, did the channel make a couple hundred dollars this month to help get Danny somewhere? Or did it like the super chats that you guys do, we collect all that and it goes into a kitty so we can travel. But at the end of the day, the potential for the other channel to fund this channel is so great. Yes. Uh, speaking of travel, I want to give a shout out right now. There is a pretty set in stone plan in September. Oh um, yeah, mid mid September. I wanted to announce this. Um, I am going to be flying out to El Paso, Texas, and I'm going to be uh, co dogging and possibly co-dogging? driving with co dog and co driving. That sounds horrible. With uh with dan spallinger from uh nismo stuff racing uh he has that really badass frontier that he rally races over on the east coast uh and he invited me to come out and race with him um i'm really stoked because dan we've had dan spallinger on the on the podcast before um once or twice well officially once (laughs) Yes, because the second show we recorded, we oh, ended up getting a little Danny, too. Let's, uh, let's, before we wrap this up, we have to <laughs> we have to talk about this. So you guys have known us from the podcast. So Dan Spallinger, who like Danny's talking about, we love dude. Awesome. What's awesome his, dude. What was his, what's his love race the team's, guy. What's the race team name? It's he. He's Nismo Stuff Racing. If yes. you don't follow him on Facebook or um, check out his blog, he has a, a tons of history on his. Um, on his webpage, I think it's Nismo stuff blog.com or Nismo stuff.com. Um, go check it out. He's got a really, really rad Nissan frontier that he rally races. Uh, he also took it to the, um, Nora two fifty or something like that. Uh, it's, it's mostly a desert race truck and the same guy that built my race truck. 
Um, he bought yeah. all the stuff from that same guy. Very similar setup. But uh, but we had him on the show one time. Early uh, on, then, too, right? It was fairly what's early. That? It was pretty early on in our podcast. Yeah, years. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was a long time ago that and we had Dan, him on. And you guys know Danny's a nut for, for racing in general. And he does a lot of – it's kind of rally <laughs> stuff more is what he's doing up in, in Canada. Yeah, right? yeah. He races rally, but the truck is built – well yes. enough yes to to be able to do some legitimate desert racing so um so danny we had him on and danny was geeking out just being able to talk i think you were not even you were sort of toying around with race truck but you hadn't went full no no i full. had i was full race truck this the second well the first well, time yeah first time we had just i had just started building and i you know i was geeking out on his stuff basically yeah. just seeing it and actually dan spallinger was the first guy to co-drive in the old yellow Nissan really? X-Ray truck, know back that. when, back when it was an original, um, when Nissan sponsored it, Dan Spallinger was a co-driver for that truck. So oh, cool. He goes way back into the Nissan's world of racing. Um, so, and and again, you know, I I have picked his brain. He's picked my brain a million times about race truck stuff. Um, so so we're very close internet friends. <laughs> um, but he like such a cool guy. So much fun to talk to. Uh, and he's he's a great dude, and he's super Nissan. Um, and so, yeah, the first interview was great. We had a great time, um, lots of good chats. Um, the second interview... Wait, 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 wait. So this hmm. would have been 2017. I was still at my last studio, my last house. Yeah. And and Danny hit me up. Hey, Dan, Dan Spillinger is going to be on tonight. Because Danny, a lot of times, if you see a guest on here, Danny's booked that guest. Uh, like uh, Z1 Off-Road and all that. Uh, the Who was the guy we had last week? Um, uh, ride, ride the Car Ride guy. the Car Guy. Like all these guests usually. The zebras. Usually, yeah, a lot yeah. Of the, a lot of those guys. I'm, I geek out, and then I contact them, and yeah. then we have them on the show. It's a lot of the times that's what happens. So so Danny hit me up last minute. He's like, hey, man, Dan Spallinger is going to be on the show tonight. Are you cool with that? And I was like, of course I'm cool with Dan being on the show. Uh, he was a great interview before. and um, But Danny, we were having – it was me, you, and Holden. It was back when Holden was with us. And there was we were having yeah. a problem. There was some problem we were having, much like tonight's show. There was a problem we were having, but Danny had been hitting the sauce pretty good. Like, like <laughs> Danny was oh, feeling yeah. no pain. And I well, was, so so Dave, the, the premise was is I was actually out on a on a on a local deployment for the military. Oh, oh uh, yeah. And so sometimes when you do that, you uh, you you take some liberties. Uh, <laughs> So I had I had started out uh, 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 slightly half cocked, I think, if I remember right. <laughs> yes, I remember very well. <laughs> but so so I'm I'm like I hear Danny instantly all all like just hyper and and I was like oh this cannot go well and and so we get Dan on there and and I record the interview and it was horrible. Something about cats were in it. There was something about some cats Dude. were. It, I can't. I can't even remember. I remember that it, that it was like kind there of was a last minute thing, or and in the background, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That ugh, dude, I can't. I can't even remember. So let's just let's just say that I had I had been uh, premiumly sauced for that entire interview. I so I I had listened to this and it was a mess. Like like and and very not very professional of us and not not a way to honestly for Dan to be on the show, but. Um, it was a mess. And so Danny, that was got to be one of those lost episodes that sadly it's a lost. It's for sure. A lost episode. Danny, Danny better. <laughs> Danny hit me up and was like, Hey, how come we never released that show? And I was like, dude, I lost it. Uh, I don't know where that show went <laughs> and, and come to find out. I actually did, uh, about a month later, accidentally did delete it. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it probably was, for the best. We, Danny, one time we've got to talk about just all the stupid stuff we used to do at podcasts, man. So we, we used to bring <sighs> guests on, and we would see that we would Skype with them, and they would see us like this. And me and Danny, early on, we learned that if you mess with the guests while they're deep into serious conversations, oh, you yeah. just I had little fox ears that I would put on, or some silly hat, or a mask, or something. Ostrich pillows, and yeah, uh, yeah. We it was like we were trying to derail our yes. own podcast. It was pretty premium. Well, we were because because sometimes there, certain interviews get to be too technical or too like stuffy, and we're like, man, we're that's not us. Like you guys no. are watching us now. We'll never be a hundred thousand subs or whatever, but you guys for whatever reason like what the goofiness that me and Danny bring. So we always do try to bring that in interviews, and now you guys get to see the fun we have so yeah um, which which i i really 
I really like this form better because, and and you know what, we 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 should probably bring back the bullshit that we did all this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that in, in truth, like, uh, but to, to get back to to Dan Spallinger uh, and Nismo stuff racing, um, we're gonna be racing. It's a 250 mile race uh, in Texas. It's five laps, uh, 50 miles each. Um, like I said, if you if you don't know who Nismo stuff racing is excuse me find him on facebook find him on uh the interwebs like i said it's a i think it's if you just google nismo stuff racing you'll find him um really really rad dude he has amazing insight on a lot of nissan truck stuff on he if you go back on his website you'll see his whole build on his race truck really really cool uh x uh i'm sorry frontier um and i actually it was crazy because when i was building my truck I was over there and this guy's on the like far East coast. Yeah. Uh, I was, like, I was there and I was, I was looking at all the stuff and I was like, Oh wait, that's Dan Spallinger's bumper. And it was sitting next to my race truck. Like as it was getting built, it just, it's a small world where a bunch of Nissan bros out here. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to fly out to Texas and race with him because he's like, Hey, you want to go race? And I was like, I could do nothing. And it's my birthday. It's his birthday. We're going to go race together. Uh, I'm still trying to talk Dave into it. I'm not, I don't think he's going to be able to make it, but um, you guys should comment and say whether or not you think Dave should be there for this epic race to well, document it, take video uh, and, and pressure him into doing this because Dave needs to be there. The idea of flying right now, which is not scary, but the idea of having to wear a mask the whole damn time just sounds horrible. Chicken little. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Even though Texas isn't too far. No, I, I kind of want to go damn. But at the same point, it's like you're racing, and I, I don't know what exactly I can cover besides, well, here comes Danny in for a pit. <laughs> you, can, you, you can be the camera guy. Really? Nice. I'll let you. Thanks, man. It's awful nice of you. Um, dude, this, this show's been all over, but hopefully you guys <laughs> liked it. I'll, um, the the All-Terrain Nation, I will get over the next day or two, I will get... Um, We'll get our little press release for that, and me and Danny will, will post up on that. Once again, there was talk at one time we thought about just changing this channel over, but we love Nissan too much. Like, like you heard me tonight give Nissan a bunch of crap, but it, it isn't me giving me it's, – it's not the normal reporter that's going to give Nissan crap because that's the trend to do. I, the, the, the crap that I give Nissan is because I love the brand, and I always love the brand, even, even though – Agreed. Even though we do something completely different for all trucks or cars, like this is my home base and it, and it has been for so long. Like I, you guys, once again, I started Xterra Nation. I started this, I started an event for Nissan and it wasn't because I was just like, oh, they're building the coolest stuff ever. No, it's because I love the underdog for one thing. And I love just, I've always loved the brand. And even though. I gave the Gen 2 crap to Danny there. I still love, we have one out in the garage. I love the thing. Well, it'll never be in the garage because Kelly. I'll trade you for a Z. I'll trade you your second Ooh. Gen for a Z. Let me talk to dude. Don't 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 play with my emotions like that because that could happen real quick, Danny. Uh, we meet in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> if the well, timing bell doesn't fly off, yeah, sure. That, that would be a great video, wouldn't it? Like you, uh, us meeting somewhere like Denver or somewhere and just being like, yeah, trading cars. Um, anyways, I love, guys, I love this second gen X term. Anyways, guys, this has been two hours, Dan. No shit. No shit. Oh this my is... gosh, you're right. But well, cool. Uh, before before you before you do our outro, Dave, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for all of you homies that that pop on here every yes. Sunday, um, and thanks for everybody that's watched all of our videos. Um, thanks for everybody that that hops over and watch all my videos. Um, it's it's truly appreciated. Um, me and Dave are just two working dudes that love America and love Nissan and try and trying our best just to do the side hustle. And so uh, we, we were super stoked that you guys all just hang with us and, and enjoy our content. Um, comment and tell us what you want to see, what you want from us. Um, if you, if you think that, that we're doing something wrong, PM us <laughs> and tell us what we're doing wrong. We're, we're regular dudes and we want to bring the best content ever. Um, we want to uh, bring content that you want to watch. I mean, I know like TFL and all of these guys, it's, I watch it. It's interesting, but at the end of the day, they don't, they don't practice what they preach. They don't, they got, they've got a couple Hills over there. They, they take everything and climb up, but those guys, 
they're they're not deep into it. Like me and Danny, it, if we get to test drive a new Bronco, guess what? We're gonna go beat the crap out of the thing because we know what it should do. If we test drive the latest Frontier, guess what? We're gonna go beat the crap out of it because we want to. It, we, it's in our blood. If we go racing, Danny say they they're the new Z and it's in LA and they take us to the California Speedway and say, hey, go do it. Guess what? Danny's not gonna let off the pedal and and just so the video looks cool. Danny spins out. Danny spins out. We're going to show this stuff God, to you because oh God, Dave, you're 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 wetting my whistle. I'm going to I I I go take a Z. I'm going to go take a Z to the to the uh, to the uh, whatever LA whatever the new track right. is called out here. But yeah, oh, could you imagine? Uh, Dave, what, you got my wheels spinning. Yeah. <laughs> but but yes, once again, and we're going to take this same passion to the new channel. And I once again, I apologize for I meant to have the link up and just I haven't got to eat my my noodles yet, Dan. So, um, and I'm half drunk. There you oh, go. Dave, bef bef oh, sorry I, again before you close. I'm out of booze, uh, Danny. I had a, I had a brilliant idea. Ooh. Oh, hey, you guys. Scratch gonna... that. My wife had a brilliant idea. If you guys would like to see a show, a pre recorded show of me and Dave doing an extremely drunken show, but our wives actually say the words that we say, what do you uh, mean? What comment we say? below. Uh, it'd be very similar to Drunk History. If you've never watched that show, watch the show and then and then respond. Okay. Uh, there, there's some ideas like out there that, Mystery that would be a lot of fun. We'll just have um, us up here like this, and you'll see the outline of our wives at the we'll bottom. Call it, no, no, no. It'll be me. It'll be my wife yeah. pretending to be me. Okay. And your wife pretending to be you. But we'll pre-record the audio of me excessively drunk talking about Nissan things. You excessively drunk talking about Nissan things. And then it's actually our wives pretending like we're they're us oh, saying okay. the things that we okay. say excessively drunk. Well, I do. I do have the next one of the next shows coming out is going to be if you listen to episode 13 of the podcast, it will be how did I get into all this? And uh, I've got a video coming form of that coming with me and Kelly sitting down and just talking about about how we got into this. And Joe Taylor, I do believe that. Uh, Nathan isn't used enough in in that, and and Roman and his boy Tommy seem to be geeking out over each other. But so one of my next videos is going to be me and Kelly just sitting on the couch talking about how we got into this, and and I think at some point, Danny, I think I the people would like to for you just to sit down and just yeah, what yeah, what I've, truly, I've thought about it, doing an origin story myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, once again, guys, we appreciate this so much. I'm gonna wait till this hits two hours because we're an hour 58 dan but oh uh, that's that's we, legit dude. i know we got a good old-fashioned two-hour blast we gotta do it man but uh, hey guys I, I can't i can't stress enough follow the X on my channel <laughs> fellas uh i'm so close i got like about 300 hours watch time left and uh and yeah jeez I'm, kelly i just caught kelly's like a mask would be an improvement wow man our fans are getting hardcore on this thing and like it would, Dave. You're very ugly and you smell bad. <laughs> but you guys, this you're not, you're if not you want man. an idea of what the old school podcast used to be like before I had to edit all that stuff to be Oh god. This was the, it, man, tonight. The fact that the fact that our first couple of episodes, uh, I literally just wrote down funny words that I that I decided oh, you that remember I was that? to try and we would slide into the podcast. <laughs> Me and Danny and JR did it on one episode. Like, yeah, we would write down words of like how do we get I'm like I gotta say for Nortonarod somehow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So guys, we did it. Two hours of uh, hilarity. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Do you agree with any of it? Do you not? Uh, once again, like Danny was saying, you guys are the 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 steering of this boat. We just are kind of the boat. If you guys want us to talk about something, let us know. Direct message us. Uh, Nissan Nation Podcast currently at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. I've promised gear coming like um, the glass but I just haven't found a reasonable price on those currently. So we got some stuff like that. We uh, yeah, get, your, get your hats. We'll uh, we'll try and we'll try and get some of the hats going again. So yeah. you guys, if you guys no, can support I'm, us by buying hats, and thank you for some, that because I'm actually out of hats. Uh, Danny, yeah. the one Danny had on, I had to have specially shipped to him because it was uh, um, they were out. And so from all things Nissan here in my studio, Dan, in your studio. To wherever you guys are watching us around the globe, this has been your Nissan Nation. And what are we, Danny? Ow!
<laughs> Peace, See everybody. everybody. Hey, guys. Uh, w- Tuesday, new video. We're out. Peace. Peace.